Hi, welcome back. You caught me building again. If you have about maybe 80 connecting cubes or blocks, bring them, because they'll be fun to play with today. Grab your other supplies too. We will be distributing some things around. And I'll meet you back here in a second. To Brianna. Remember our story about Brianna, how she had collected six, po six scenic postcards and four postcards of animals in her journeys, and she visited eight different places. We're going to kind of bring that back up again, and we're going to work with some visuals here and talk about this distributive property. Now, we already talked about, about the commutative property and the associative property, and each of those properties talk about how you can, when you're working with addition and multiplication, you can move those numbers around any way you want and you'll get the same result. Or you can group them differently and get the same result. Well, this next property, the distributed property, teaches us that we can redistribute our numbers to find the same result as well. So again, remember Brianna. So at each place, she collected six scenic postcards. So right here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so each of them represents one scenic postcard. And then with that, she also picked up four postcards of animals of the place. Okay, so these are gonna represent her four animal postcards. One, two, three, four. Okay, then we can bring them together like that. Now, do you remember how many places she visited? She visited eight, so she collected this at each one. So how many times do we need to show this? Eight times. Maybe you're following along with me and have your own blocks or cubes in front of you, but we're gonna do eight of these. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So, and I'm gonna kinda push them all together here. It's okay if all of yours are the same color, but we do wanna represent the fact that six were scenic and four were of animals. So if you can even remember that, that's okay too, if all your cubes are the same color. All right, so let's talk about how we can write this. So we have six scenic cubes right here, right? With our four of our animals. And then how many do we have? How many places did she visit? Great, she visited eight. Wonderful. Okay, let's talk about a few different ways we can find how many total postcards Brianna has. I'm gonna give you a second to think about that as you look at our model here. What would you do? How would you figure out the answer? Again, the question is, how many postcards do, does Brianna have in all? Great. So what we could do, we could add six and four together. Okay, we can add six and four and multiply it by what? By eight to get our answer. Okay. What would be important when I write this expression right here? What do I need to add? My parentheses. We have to remember that these go together. The six and the four must, must go together. We can't multiply our four by our eight. That wouldn't make sense, right? So make sure you have those parentheses there. Can you think of a different way you could figure out the answer? Great. Some of you might have said, you know what? I want to first multiply my six and my eight together. So I'm going to multiply my six and my eight. In fact, let's write this a little bit lower because we will evaluate each of these. So six times eight to find out this much. And then I can add it 
my four times eight. Do you agree this is four times eight? Hmm. Now I wonder if we work through these if we get the same answer. Six and four are 10. Great, and I multiply that by eight, what would I get? Great, 80, all right. Well, let's hope we get the same answer here. Let's figure it out. Again, our multiplications will come first, right? So our six times eight is gonna give us 48. And then we can bring everything down and those of you that have practiced a lot with these order of operations, I could allow you to actually do this multiplication problem right away also and bring it down, but we're just gonna keep practicing this step by step. So 48 now plus four times eight, 32. So 48 and 32 will give us what? Great, 80, phew, yes, so there are, uh, or Brianna has 80 postcards would be our final answer statement. And so this is, what we've done here is we've distributed these numbers around a little bit. We took our six and multiplied it by eight and then added it to our four times eight down here. So it's this redistribution of the numbers. It gives us more ways to solve a problem also. All right, we're gonna try this one now. So if I gave you 10, but we're gonna subtract four from that 10. And then we're gonna multiply that by three. Hmm. I wonder if using your connecting cubes or, or blocks, if you can show this visually. I'm gonna ask you to pause the video, see if you can build this, and then hop back on and we'll do it together. So we're gonna start with our 10. So I have 10 right here, okay? And it does say from our 10, we're gonna subtract four. So I'm gonna take one, two, three, four off of there, okay? And it says I'm supposed to do this how many times? Three times. So let me get my other 10 and take four off, just kind of taking those four away. And my last 10. And I'm gonna take four away from that. Okay, so what am I left here with? Four, five, six, I can do six times three, right? It'll give us 18. Let's see if we get this when we work this out. 10 minus our four is six times three, which should give us a result of 18, which you see right here. All right, let's show it a different way. So we can distribute our numbers around. We can start with 10 and we can multiply it by one, two, three, right? Because initially we had 10, but we had three groups of them. So we can do 10 times three. Hmm, and then what might we do? Well, we would need to subtract the four from each one of them. So we need to subtract three groups of four. So I'm gonna subtract or four groups of three, or three, one, two, three, but four in each group, right? So one, two, three, four, we're gonna take these off. Because first of all, as you see, how many do I have all together here? I have 30, right? 10 times three is 30. But I need to subtract four from each of these groups. So if I subtract four, one, two, three, so, Three groups of four gives me how many over here that I'm subtracting? 12. So I can look at this as I had 30 in all, but I subtract 12 from it and I still got 18. I'm curious to know what strategy you use. There's so many different strategies and I hope you're having fun figuring out which one you like best. Let's jump in and maybe find some missing numbers now. Alrighty, let's find some missing numbers. It's like a missing number treasure hunt. Let's start with this. If I gave a seven, and we're gonna multiply it by four plus three, okay? So see if you can visually imagine that in your mind. Can you see it? 
Can you see seven groups of four plus three? You can show it with your blocks too in just a second if you'd like to. Well, let's redistribute this around a little bit. So if I wrote it as this, seven hmm, times, we're gonna try to find that number, plus hmm, seven times, oh, let's try to find that number too. Okay, so we have two numbers that we're trying to find. Now, let's work with our our blocks again, or our um, connecting cubes, to see if we can find our answer. So if I had four and three, okay, so I'm gonna show that. I have four right here, and three right here. But again, I want seven groups of them. So here we are with our seven groups. If you want to pause the, the video and build this now, you can and hop back on. We're gonna keep building here. Okay, so here are my seven groups of four and three. So if we were to do what we did with our last visual, we split it up a little bit. We realized we have four right here, right? I have one, two, three over here. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down here. Okay, by seeing it this way, can we try to figure out what the missing numbers are? Hmm, I bet you figured it out. I bet you saw seven times four is gonna give us all of these. And then seven times three is gonna give us all of those. And we will just need to add them together. You see how that works? All right, let's try two more without our visuals to see if we can do it. Look at this really closely. You see how I did seven times four, which you see here? And then I added, which you see right here, my seven times three, okay? Remember that as we try it without our visuals. All right, here we go. Let's do this. If I have 10 and I'm multiplying it by 72, hmm, and then I'm gonna subtract 10 times 28, hmm. Now this one you might have noticed that we're doing it in the reverse way, okay? So we're given 10 you see that? And we're multiplying it by each of these numbers. So can you visually imagine your 10 by 72? I wonder if we can just draw it this time. Can you imagine your 10 by 72? But we need to subtract a 10 by 28. So we need to take off Ooh, 28, okay? So what would 28, what would 72 minus our 28 be? If we took our 72 and then we subtracted our 28, that could give us this number right here, right? But we don't need to evaluate it right now. We're just gonna write the expression. Okay, so. We know that in all, this is 72. And we also know that this little part right here is 28. Hmm, so how can I utilize these two numbers in this one? 10 times our 72 minus our 28. Okay, do you see that? Because we are looking for this right here, okay? We're looking for this piece of the puzzle if we we're gonna evaluate it. So again, we can do 10 times 72 minus 10 times 28 or 10 times our 72 
minus 28. You see how that's gonna give us the same result? All right, let's do one more. All right, with this one, we're gonna do like a little bit of rounding with a distributive property. It kind of has a few things mixed that we have been working on recently. Um, we'll, we'll start here. How about if I give you the number 69 and we're gonna multiply it by four. Hmm. What might be an easier way to solve this problem? Because 69 and four, they're not like I'm working with my fives or tens or hundreds, right? They're a little bit trickier numbers. I wonder if I could think, well, what's 70 times four? Do I know that? That might be a little bit easier to figure out. So four groups of 70 would give me how much? Great, 280. But I don't want 70 groups of four, I just want 69 groups of four. So, what do I need to subtract? I need to subtract one group of four, right? Oops, yes, it equals four. But I need to subtract it now from here. We're gonna write it in another way in just a second. But if I take four from my 280, I should get 276. So in other words, I kind of distribute it in a way where I'm working with a 10 that feels so much easier. So I took my 69 and I changed it to 70. So I added one to it, one group of four, right? I added a group of four, but then I needed to subtract that group of four, right? So it's gonna, I redistributed this to look like this. So then I have 70 again times four minus four times one. It's gonna give me 276. You see how redistributing could be a little bit easier in terms of mentally calculating it. Now we can always go back to an algorithm too if we want to in addition and compare our answer. So if I take 69 and I multiply it by four, this is a great way to double check. Four times nine is gonna give me 36. Four times six is gonna give me 24. I'm gonna add my three there. Oh good, phew, I'm so glad. <laughs> we got the same answer there. All right, hopefully this was helpful. Have fun redistributing those numbers around to make those mental calculations a little bit easier for you. See you next time.